Ashman and Mencken had met in something called the BMI Music Workshop, which is a workshop that um, aspiring composers and lyricists apply to in New York. And um, they pair people off. And um, Ashman and Mencken developed a working relationship. And suddenly he was left without a partner. But a member of that same workshop that he wanted to work with is the lyricist that um, supplied the lyrics for Newsies, a guy by the name of Jack Feldman. And um, you may know his lyrics for a Barry Manilow hit at the Copa Copa Cabana. <laughs> so one of the fun things about that song is it tells a story and he developed himself as a lyricist as a storyteller now he had um, done and had a relationship with um, Disney um, primarily when home video came on um, out and Disney started capitalizing on the success of The Lion King, doing Lion King 2, and Cinderella 2, etc. He was involved in a lot of those projects. So they weren't the top shelf, but um, he and Mencken met, decided that it was time to work, and that this was a good project to work on. So, We've got a screenplay without musical numbers, and how do you get through all of that? Um, well, it takes good writers, and Mencken and um, Feldman really came up with some winners. Um, they function differently in the stage musical slightly, but solidly, the music score of the Broadway musical Newsies is very similar to the um, film score. Now, the really interesting thing is Newsies was released in 1992, got horrible reviews. My wife, Michelle, and I actually went on opening night because we were excited to go see a musical. And we enjoyed it a lot. We went out and bought the CD. Um, we traveled um, to South Dakota to see family, and we constantly played that over and over and over again. So the earworms emerged. And <laughs> the rhythm of the piece really emerged to us, too. So what does Disney do when it doesn't make any money? After two weeks, they pull it, pull it from the theater, and um, it sits on the shelf. Uh, the film cost $10 million to make, and it only made back at the box office $2.8 million. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty much flop. But um, let's talk a little bit about uh, more about the Newsy strike. And um, the strike, as I said, was in 1899. And our hero was inspired by an actual person. His name was Louis Ballot, B A L L A T. Um, he was called Kid Blink because he was blind in one eye and wore an eye patch. They could have done a whole pirate movie if they wanted to because of the eye patch. But um, there were actually key people. Um, and again, the real life people, Joseph Pulitzer, who um, is the newspaper editor, power 
in New York, etc., um, was a prominent character. Um, and the director of the original film was also a choreographer by the name of Kenny Ortega. And another one of his films has something in common with Newsies. It flopped. <laughs> it was a musical called Xanadu oh, no. with um, Olivia Newton-John. And ironically, Xanadu was adapted as a Broadway musical and had a moderate success. Ran about a year and a half. Um, so two flops are running right now. Yeah. So, <laughs> doing great. I mean, timing is everything. And maybe had Newsies been released at a different time, because the movie is not that bad. Um, it's entertaining. Um, it's got the structure of a movie and the beats of a movie. You set stuff up, you find a conflict, um, you work through that conflict, but there's something else that happens that um, inhibits a happy ending, and finally you get to the happy ending. But the rhythm of a movie is different than the rhythm of a Broadway musical. So, Newsy sits on the shelf for a while, but new technology starts emerging. There are cable TV channels, and Disney Channel was once a pay TV count, um, channel, and at certain times of the year, they would have free access. So they um, kind of like HBO in its early years and Showtime in its early years would have a stable of like three or four movies that they run over and over and over again. And they featured newsies and the audience loved it. They became really devout fans and um, that was enhanced by another technology that is um, kind of faded in the limelight, something called VHS. <laughs> <laughs> and when uh, Disney released it on VHS, a whole different audience discovered it. They love the music, they love the characters, and again, this was really a kid's audience, even though um, adults can appreciate um, that kind of film. 